Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's episode of LR Live we are going to be increasing the footprint of our Discovery 3 with these Mantec wheel spacers. Now, wheel spaces are a controversial topic. A lot of people don't like them, um, but most of those people probably haven't ever tried them. Now, I like them because I think a wider footprint is a really good idea if you're going off-road, but also on the Discovery 3 and the Defender, the turning circles are awful, and you do improve your turning circle with a set of wheel spaces. Now, I've said this before on the Defender, I'll say it very quickly here, there's no difference really in my mind to fitting these than fitting a steel wheel or an alloy wheel with a greater offset, because you're not putting any more or less strain on those um, axles but the thing is these are hub centric so what that means is they've actually got this shoulder inside here that takes the stress away from the hub so unlike normal ones which is just a, it's just an actual spacer itself um, the fact they've got this shoulder that sits in does transfer and distribute the stresses um, into the wheel so you know gone are the days i think where you just say no to a wheel space i think there's more to them these days so let me show you how they're fitted what kind of effect they have on the vehicle and some of the issues we came across and how we managed to rectify them primarily being with the amount of dirt that it throws up on the vehicle check it out so once again we're using our sealy jack we'll put a axle stand under there as well Right, if I show you under here, look, so that is a cable support for the handbrake and you can see it's already going through the housing and that is razor sharp. So we need to replace that uh, in the interim. We need to remove it really, if we can. So here we are, one of the Mantec wheel spacers, 30 mil. Uh, the studs are pressed in, so all we need to do is just offer that into place there. Okay, and you've got the, your new nuts that go on. So these nuts here on the actual spacer itself need to be torqued up to the same torque setting as your external wheel nuts. And I'll put that on the screen now so you know exactly where you are. So we can't to do them up to torque until the wheel's on the ground, but we can tighten them up on here for now. The wheel spaces I'm really liking. I like the way the vehicle feels um, and it handles nicely. The only thing I'm a bit disappointed about is the amount of filth they throw on the body of the vehicle which i knew would happen but the extent of it i don't mind it on the door so much but it was actually going on to the door handles themselves which isn't great so i'm going to look at putting some mud flaps on here so you can get a cheap set aftermarket that seems like it's good value not too hard to fit so i'm going to be putting those on to see if that makes a difference we'll get the get them on get the vehicle clean go through some mud and see what happens I was expecting these mud flaps to be rock hard, but I'm really impressed how flexible they are. Look. Now, one of my main concerns was if I fit these mud flaps and I go off road, are they just going to shatter and split? But you can see here, look, they've actually got a load of flexibility to them. So they're a really nice material um, and they're pretty easy to fit. So it's literally just, I think, three screws front and back. The old ones might be a bit tricky to get out, but don't throw them away because certainly with the front ones, I found that the screws aren't really long enough and good enough quality. So if you've got some good ones that you're pulling out of the vehicle, I'd probably use those again. Uh, no problem on the back ones because the screws you get are nice and long um, and have really good purchase. Now this is the front. I've already done the left-hand side because I wanted to make sure 
didn't look like a fool and uh, knew how to do it. So um, there was one little detail that was a bit tricky to work out. So watching this video is going to be useful to you if you're going to be fitting mud flaps to your own Discovery 3. Uh, when you actually get both of these, they have this support plate, which is nicely finished. Um, so it's not just an e-coat, which is like basic smooth black paint that you get on a lot of parts. It's actually got quite a durable finish to it, um, which is good because obviously there's a lot of mud and everything that's going to collect in that area. You don't want these rotting away too quickly. So you've got to actually insert the uh, support bracket into the mud guard itself. That gives it the strength where it's mounted, which is what we want because the rest of it can be as flexible as we like. Lock in your first angled tab at the bottom, then the other two, and then it just flats down and, and it's molded to, to shape. So the quality of these is really good. I'm really impressed. It's obviously, uh, you know, an aftermarket part, but it's using the Land Rover design, even to the sort of very small details of this edge on the molding. Okay, so this is in the front wheel arch uh, on the right hand side and we've got one screw down here. We've got one screw up here. And then if we go underneath, there should be one round about here. Okay, so all of those three have got to come out. I am using our cordless ratchet driver again, which you might have seen before. So this is a Ryobi tool. Um, it's not sponsored or anything. I picked it up from Halfords, but for the price, it was 150 quid. Um, with a charger and a battery and the unit that was on offer, but what a cool bit of kit. Don't go in here with this if you're worried that you've got rotten screws, but you can just get a gentle start on them. And that's what you're hoping for. So these are nice and long, and what we're going to do is we're going to use these again, and I'll show you why in just a second. Now on the other side, the underneath one had rotted. Now I've put some WD on there in preparation. Right, that's our rusty one. Uh, not the end of the world, we can use that again. On the other side, I did have to put quite a bit of pressure on it because when it's on, the holes tend not to line up perfectly because it's a tight fit. So you're trying to compress this lip because that will stop moisture getting in behind the mud guard. Right, I've tried to punch up the exposure a little bit so you can see me working on this, but I'm actually gonna be putting these screws in at an angle so I can get them to lift it up. What that's gonna mean is the bottom one's gonna be quite hard to get to. So we don't wanna do them all up tight. We have to do each one in stages. You know what, I'm gonna try the top one first. That to me seems like the most likely to go in. And it'll just hold it in place. Right, that's one. The bottom one is a bit trickier because you've really got to pull it towards the back of the vehicle. Beautiful. That's gone in a treat. Look at that. Right, we'll just do our top one up now because we didn't do it all the way. One at the top, and down here, and then I'll show you this one from underneath here because it's a bit easier. You can just hopefully see in there. So they are a nice, tidy fit look. No gaps at all. Even follows the contour of the sill. So, made up with that, let's do the bag. So we have two screws to remove on this one. We've got this one here, which sits, we coming into the vehicle from here, and it sits just there. So we've got to remove this one. And then underneath, this is a bit trickier. So show you where it is. You go underneath the rear arch. So you're now just looking underneath and you've got this. You've got another screw here to remove. Hopefully you can see that. It's just difficult because the sun, but there's the other one underneath. And then if we look in here, back of the wheel arch here, you can just see the tire there and we've got this bracket so this is where we're going to fit a block to receive a screw and there's a bracket that goes from here around there and i'll get it in place and it'll make a lot of sense but that's it without it fixed again we've got a bit of a rusty one here has he put a slot in this one as well yes good chap this could do with some lube actually 
Now again, if, I haven't, if you haven't seen the other video where I use this or it's not come out yet, I'll remind you because this is the new uh, delivery nozzle from WD-40. It's got like a bendy metal straw. It's so useful because literally you can just now go up, look, and you'll see in the other video, I really did get somewhere inaccessible with this and it made all the difference. So yeah, check it out, it's worth having. So this is one of the brackets you get and you have to put uh, your retainer in there and you get another one you put into that square that I showed you before underneath. So I'm gonna use um, all of our original screws, the one from inside the wheel arch is the best one, uh, to fix this into that position. So we've got our bracket in place. It's fixed with one of our original screws into the speed clip. Bracket goes round, then it faces the wheel arch trim facing forwards and there's our tire so you can see how it's orientated because it's really difficult to explain or understand from the instructions and to be honest that is really the only hard part of this installation because we've now just got uh, the three fixing points we've got the additional one which we've added at the bottom we've got the existing one which you had at the top and we've got the lower one which goes into the sill so it is just pretty easy and the nicest thing about this kit is they give you some super long screws ideal look at that and some nice washers so you can get proper good purchase because you do have to wrangle it slightly so i wanted to show you what a great fit this mudguard is look you can see here how it follows the contour of the back there i mean that is that's definitely a factory fit i love that and the fact is that they are flexible so you know we're not going to worry about going off-road and let's just hope they keep the shit off the truck. Well guys, that was a pretty easy job and I'm really pleased with how those mud flaps look. Um, let's just hope they perform as well as they look. So I'll come back to you in a couple of weeks and let you know if we've still got some clean door handles or not. Um, but we have got some really good videos coming out and scheduled over the next few weeks. We've been really busy filming. Um, we've got a great video coming out on the Disco 3 in about a week's time where we fix a load of other bits and pieces which have made a massive difference to the vehicle. So I'm really keen to let you know what we did there. And we've got some more defense Defender action going on so we're actually doing something really special on the interior of the Defender tomorrow and that hopefully will be posted next week and we've got a couple of road trips to show you so don't go anywhere do subscribe do give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you on the next one.